it is hard to believe that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is around four months away. And today, we got a brand new interview that's covering battles, moogles, summons, and all sorts of other things, including the weapon fights. So please, smack that subscribe button like it owes you money. Because today, I'm in HD. No more crappy webcam. Finally got a decent camera that we can use. So today's interview comes from RPG Fan, and there's a ton of interesting information that's been revealed in here. RPG fans' first question was, what character new or returning was the hardest to get in the Rebirth's combat system compared to the original game? Hamaguchi had this to say, pretty much all the monsters and bosses are carefully crafted. We put effort into all of them. I would say the Materia Guardian in the demo you got to play, while it does seem kind of similar to the Guard Scorpion, they are very different. So we made sure the gameplay experience for defeating these enemies felt different but very rewarding for an early boss fight. Regarding fitting characters into to Rebirth, we seriously considered each of their roles and wanted to keep that balance within the game. And we also considered the overall image the fans of the series may have towards the characters, so there are appropriate expectations for these. There are things that we really took into consideration, for example with Red 13. He's the kind of character that has a lot of close range attacks, but we also wanted to differentiate that from another character like Cloud who can do the same thing. So Red 13 will have more of a timing based attack based on his ability to guard. This leads to his revenge mode ability that's specific to him and makes him unique. As for Kate Sith, we can't go into a lot of details at this point, but we did see in trailers him riding into battle on the fat Moogle, which will come into play in battle. Whether he is riding on the Moogle or not will make a difference in his playstyle during battle. His dice element will also be part of his attacks, so in a way, we kept elements of the characters that fans love while making them balance with actions in battle. It's something we took great care in doing. One of the bigger criticisms of the the original 1997 Final Fantasy VII OG was that most of the characters didn't really have much to differentiate them. I mean, sure, there were their limit breaks and basic attacks, but after a while, once you put the right materia configuration on them, they all kind of played somewhat similar. Here in Remake, there's actually a much bigger difference between all of the characters, right, that necessitates you using different characters in your build. For example, you know, using Yuffie or Barret for longer range range enemies that are flying in the air is going to be a much better idea than trying to use Cloud, even though his aerial combat has been significantly improved for Rebirth. It allows you to pick your characters and to pick your party based on who is going to provide the most optimal setup, making each party member incredibly useful. You're also in this game able to store party configurations, so if you want a party that's good for tackling long range enemies, you could have a party that's Yuffie and Barret, but if you want a more close range party configuration, configuration, you could have another party that is Cloud, Tifa, and Red 13, and you can just swap between those parties dynamically, and that's really cool. Now, one thing that remains to be seen, and it hasn't been announced yet, I assume that this is going to be a feature by the third game at least, is being able to dynamically swap party members in and out of battle mid-battle, uh, similar to what Final Fantasy X did. That is something that I have been wanting from a new Final Fantasy game for a really, really long time, and I am hoping that we're going to get it with Rebirth, if not Rebirth, maybe this third game. Hopefully Final Fantasy 17 will do that too, assuming that Final Fantasy 17 has party members, but that is something that I am really hoping for. I love being able to swap party members mid battle. Next he asks, approximately how many mini games are playable in the gold saucer? Do you have a favorite or one you're excited for players to finally get their hands on. Hamaguchi then replied, quote, For many games, save a few of them, pretty much all from the original games are going to be recreated for Rebirth. For example, with Mog House minigame that used to be in the Gold Saucer, this is now on the world map, and we can experience the Mog House without being in the Gold Saucer. As for my favorite, and one I'm really excited for players to experience, I'd say the Chocobo races, which will tie into the main story as well. Like all the side content in the game, Chocobo races are really well developed, and it's a mini game I can easily see the fans getting into because of all the aspects to it. To add to that, fans of the original games, or people who have played the original, have this image that the Gold Saucer was the place for mini games and the hub for those activities. This time around, there will be mini games within the Gold Saucer and some outside of it, scattered across the world. I like this because you're going to have to basically go out into the world and find stuff. They can be uncovered by exploring exploring certain locations or talking to certain characters. For example, 
The card game can be played by characters worldwide, bringing that triple triad energy to FF7. I love it. By continuing the journey and progressing the story, you will unlock new minigames and new opponents across the world. I think players will come out of it feeling that the entire world of Rebirth offers so much in terms of activities to enjoy. I think that is super awesome. Being able to find mini games out in the world is going to create a sense of adventure, a sense of discovery. Again, if there is one thing that I think that a lot of the modern Final Fantasy games have very agreeably fallen flat on, it's like a really good feeling of exploration and journey and, you know, finding these sort of hidden discoveries. I think that Rebirth having these sort of hidden mini games throughout the world is awesome, especially if you can, you know, return to the Gold Saucer and play a lot of them. But it's cool that the Gold Saucer isn't just the like designated mini game hub you're gonna be able to uh, essentially Yakuza this thing, buy mini games throughout the side quest and all sorts of other things like that throughout the world. Probably the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to with Rebirth and the thing that I wanted to nail even more than my concerns about where the story is going is to just really nail the sense of the Final Fantasy adventure as we used to know it. I think that's the thing that people miss more than anything about this series, even more than turn-based combat or honestly anything else I could think of. It's just the feeling of epic Final Fantasy adventure where there are so many discoveries to be made and that you're going on this giant worldwide adventure. To me, those things are like really core to like what the FF experience like really is. Continuing, RPG fan asks, in trailers, we have seen the synergy team attacks. Will everybody have a team attack with every character a la Chrono Trigger or will it be limited to specific grouping of characters? Amaguchi saying, thank you for this great question. To answer it simply, all characters have have synergy attacks with every character pairing. Let's go! Sort of the reason we decided to do it this way was to give players the freedom and fun of choosing through trial and error their favorite pairings or trying unique pairings they haven't tried before. We were able to have it so that only specific characters were able to synergy attack, but that would go against the freedom and enjoyment for the player. We wanted to keep that idea of freedom for the players despite knowing that a lot of hard work and graphic resources went into making it this way. Hamaguchi is determined to win me over, man. I really enjoy his way of thinking about these things. I think everything he is saying is so incredibly spot on about exactly what I want from a Final Fantasy game. I also really love that he's emphasizing the word freedom a lot. Players having the freedom to choose their synergy attacks and do it with any pairing of characters that they want. That's awesome. I also just love that team attacks are making a comeback in Square RPGs. I've always thought that team attacks are really cool. They are graphically intensive, that's for sure, because you do have to make uh, a ton of pairings with all of the different characters. And depending on how many party members you have, the different combinations there can be a lot of stuff but i also feel like it builds a dimension to these characters and a sort of relationship there is almost this idea of found family within jrpgs right where you find this group of people who come together from all different places across this fantasy world right so people around the world coming together and they're finding family within this group of people that's going to work together to kill God. Showing them bonding and showing them forming the team attacks is kind of a way of building their relationships through the gameplay. So yeah, I really like when it happens. So not only is it fun from a gameplay perspective, it's also kind of good for the story as well. RPG fan then saying, we appreciate that, indeed. We do appreciate that. Hamaguchi then continues saying, on top of this, each character is going to have their own skill tree in which one can develop and gain new synergy actions and abilities for their favorite characters. For players that really like Cloud and Aerith, they can focus entirely on them or any pairings. We just wanted to give players choice and freedom to pick what they like best or what they feel is most suitable for defeating certain bosses or enemies. I think that could be a really fun experience and I completely agree. Moving on where he says, in Remake, we saw the use of summons like Leviathan and Bahamut who were not available at that point in the original game. So far, we've seen Alexander in trailers, a summon who, as far as we know, is from a part of the original that would not be explorable yet in Rebirth. So my question is, are we going to expect to see more summons from further in the story in Rebirth. 
And which summon is your favorite so far? Hamaguchi saying, great question for this as well. I can't exactly reveal which summons are in Reaper so far, but I'd like to say that the summons are from Materia from the live stream in the original Final Fantasy VII, but outside of that, they didn't really go into their background or how they came into existence. So for Rebirth, we will explore a little bit more into that. For example, there are areas that will be tied into the summons, like an area where a specific summon was once revered or once existed. With Chatley, the player will be exploring some of those aspects and will be shedding a bit more light on that. This is something that I absolutely love. One thing I could say about the original Final Fantasy VII was that there really wasn't too much explanation on the summons. They were kind of there, and yes, we know that they were, you know, crystallized in live stream materia. We know all that stuff, but we never got any real backstory on the summons. And it's even more crazy when you realize that Final Fantasy VII probably has the most summons in the mainline series, I think. I might be wrong on that. I need to fact check, but it's one of the biggest number of summons that the entire mainline series has and you have all these summons and there really isn't like a terribly huge backstory on any of them if at all so for them to now be getting backstories a little some of it was kind of teased in remake where shiva kind of had a backstory some of the other ones had a little bit of details that you could find but it wasn't like hugely fleshed out so to know that now we're going to get a more fleshed out backstory on these summons that's huge I love it. RPG fan then continues, as a follow-up to the summon question, are summons going to interact differently this time around than in Remake? In Remake, you just summon them and they fight alongside you. But we saw in Final Fantasy 16 how amazing and spectacular summons can really get. Do you have any plans to maybe change that system? Or is it going to be the same that we saw in Remake? For Rebirth, there isn't really something that is incorporating summons into the main story per se. But with Remake, you may recall that the materia itself did not exactly level up. This time, however, there is a growth element that is kind of different from AP. By playing mini games or progressing through certain content in the story, the summon's materia ability will grow. In that way, there is this sort of growth factor tied to the side content of the game. That could be good or bad, it just really depends on how tedious some of the side content it is and if the mini games are really fun, but that's that's not too bad. That could be really good. I think it'll drive you to do more side content to level up your materia. Hamaguchi then follows up saying, so I have a question for you. You know that in Final Fantasy VII, there are those weapon creatures? If we were to introduce them like summons as another kind of entity-like creature, do you think that'd be too much or would you enjoy it? That's a very interesting question. RPG fan said, I think that'd be very cool. Giant kaiju battles are awesome. I agree, giant kaiju battles are awesome. The room laughed, and then RPG fan said, I actually enjoyed it in Final Fantasy 16 a lot. It was a lot of fun to do stuff like that, but who knows? Whenever we get to fight the weapons, you know they're really big. Maybe we need big summons as well. And then Amaguchi says, we will take that into consideration. It does really make you wonder though, how are they gonna do the weapon fights? Those things are massive. Is it gonna be something like Final Fantasy 16? Is it gonna be God of War 3, you know, that raises a lot of questions. I'm sure everyone is really curious about how the summon fights are gonna work in this game. It's something that everyone has been curious about since the first game was announced and a lot of speculation on it. I'm sure they'll come up with something that doesn't disappoint in terms of like scale and battles. Uh, there just really hasn't been anything in the remake series I think that really disappoints at all. RPG fan then asks, so final question, and maybe the most important, I'm a big fan of dressing characters up in games, and I'd like to know if there are cosmetics this time around. Maybe put Barrett into a sailor suit and keep him in it for the rest of the game, because I know he loves that suit in the original. Hamaguchi, this is a great question too, thank you. Throughout Rebirth, there are going to be occasions with optional or mandatory clothing changes. These align with certain, these align with the circumstances or the story, as far as can constantly wear them, we were careful to consider some serious moments where it may be more appropriate to not wear a costume to keep the scene impactful, being considerate so that players can have the best experience. I really don't disagree with this whatsoever. I know that people would love to be able to use the costumes whenever they want, and I think the best solution for that is to let people wear them in New Game Plus, right? Like, wear whatever costume you want to wear in New Game Plus. 
because then you've already consumed the story and having those sort of big moments not be ruined by you choosing a silly costume won't really happen, you know, in New Game Plus because you've already played the game. However, for a first playthrough, I know some people, you know, they'll walk around wearing the silliest costume that the game can offer. And then when we get to a serious cutscene, uh, you know, it'll just be really jarring to see that. So I don't blame them for wanting to keep players in the normal clothes. And personally, as a remake of Final Fantasy VII, I kind of want to see them in their regular clothes, at least on my first playthrough. Like I said, on New Game Plus, we can we can mess around all day, baby. On the first playthrough, I want to keep things, you know, kind of, you know, like, like, kind of like, you know, this is, this is what Cloud actually wears. That being said, all of this new Final Fantasy VII Rebirth info is incredibly exciting. Keeps me pumped. But please let me know your thoughts on today's update. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next video.